Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, here to usher you in in the week. It is April 9th. I'm taping this on April 8th, so if there's any news-breaking thing that happened uh, later Thursday afternoon slash uh, uh, Friday morning, then I'm definitely not going to touch base on that, but I'm going to talk about more of the recent stuff that's happening in the state of Montana, because Montana uh, has over one-fifth of their population has received a COVID shot, at least one. Uh, that's actually... The 220,000 people have received their COVID shot. That's the full vaccinated numbers as the stage 1C has gone into effect earlier this month. Mont uh, Montana healthcare workers have administered nearly 546,000 doses. That's half of Montana uh, had uh, in terms of uh, COVID doses since it does require two doses um, for both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine. The Johnson Johnson, from what I heard, and I asked about it, is that we will not be getting Johnson Johnson until May-ish, and that's a that's a that's a guesstimate on their part when I asked, because um, I got my shot in last Friday, and I took the Pfizer one because it had the shortest turnaround in terms of 21 days for the second dose. I would have gone with the Johnson Johnson because one and done, boom. But let's talk a little bit more. Um, uh, since the state vaccine rollout began in December, another 3,893 COVID tests were completed by Wednesday. The statewide testing total has reached 1.2 million people in the state of Montana. Um, and that's kind of what's happening with COVID. Uh, I, I, I usually like to show Cindy Farr report, uh, but so far she's been posting every Friday and I, I, it just uh, doesn't seem, uh, uh, prudent to, uh, the, to being timely by showing you uh, last week's uh, COVID update report by Cindy Farr, the incident commander for the city uh, and county health department. So you guys can check that out on YouTube. I'll be sure to share that link on my Facebook page as soon as it pops up. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. Let's talk about something else. Uh, the Union in Alabama has uh, officially been formed. Uh, part of this was uh, to basically vote on whether to unionize and so far, uh, Amazon has been uh, pushing really hard back on a lot of the workers and uh, curving uh, the social media angling. It's like, you don't have to bother. We treat our employees great. And there's been, you know, a couple of stories, a couple of things like that. You know, uh, their uh, deliver, uh, delivery truck drivers uh, peeing in bottles, uh, um, which has been confirmed. Um, of course, the battle has only just begun for the workers in Bessemer, Alabama, as they now have leverage to get workers' rights on track for future employees. But without getting into too many details about workers and unions, I predict that more unions will form as a result because the U.S.'s global economy actually might see jobs elsewhere, because that's kind of like what's happened. Um, I don't want to go too much into the history of the economy, but so far, 90s was a big turn for a lot of uh, businesses and industries basically looking for cheaper labor and outsourcing a lot of their jobs and workers to other countries, such as China. I don't want to get into it any more than I have to, but a lot of that has to do with uh, less uh, manufacturing, less made in the USA kind of products, uh, trends moving forward, but Amazon was kind of like the guiding light to be like, we're bringing jobs back to America and 800,000 people are employed by Amazon in the warehouses alone. So uh, I'm not an expert on the economy or business practices, but when you run the risk of losing your job because of too many bathroom breaks, you may find yourself in a difficult position as there are always people willing to take your job right from under you. I say it all the time, but I'll say it to you. Uh, there's no issue with unemployment but a lot of times it has to do with the employers and the benefits which we choose to hitch our wagon to. Um, I spoke about the PRO Act a couple weeks ago, and this is kind of silently going through the legislature, uh, but this is a huge win for a lot of unions, um, which protects the formation of unions as they are being developed uh, for employers who seek to dismantle unions, making them pay a fee for any kind of interference. You know, they hire spies and... Um, basically kind of persuade a lot of employees to vote no on unions. This would also prevent that. Um, if any uh, manager or, or official uh, uh, people from any corporation are come to you and say, hey, you shouldn't vote for a union, that's actually the PRO Act would protect you and would actually uh, penalize them from doing so. But this is all in the working process and a lot of this might actually change. But there are more information on this, but there 
was a story this week that basically this was um, so in terms of the PRO Act, um, a lot of independent contractors are kind of against the PRO Act and what the PRO Act would um, initially do. Yes, it gives more power to the workers to form a union, but in terms of independent contractors, you know, the ones who do gig work, trying to find um, employment, uh, small businesses and stuff like that, there's just a lot of uh, um, loopholes that you may want to look into. But so far, uh, having a base for workers to gain a sense of leverage from their management slash administration side of things only benefits the working class, which tends to be a larger population than, than the employer class. Of course, as part of the product would allow for a secondary strike, which is a big thing. So it, it would, um, in terms of like, if you're protesting uh, the means of a warehouse, then that means the delivery trucks who are not part of the group, the Teamsters essentially, don't wanna get too specific, but they have the ability to do a secondary strike. So if a company is doing something bad to their employees, another group can be like, we're gonna protest this company by not delivering their stuff if they don't, you know, help the workers that are currently working there. So that's the concept of secondary strike, which would also be protected under the PRO Act as well. Moving on, um, in the city of Missoula is looking to purchase the old federal post office building. I read this in the Missoula Current, but I also heard about this from just Chatter on the Grapevine, that the city of Missoula is looking to purchase the old, uh, uh, not necessarily purchase, but acquire the federal post office that is downtown. Originally, this uh, building was the hub for um, all mail and a major output for a lot of mail going through the western side of Montana. But eventually, they had to update and got a new building, which was lo which is located further up Brook, Brook Street, more in the kind of like the new center of Missoula County. So that's kind of like their bigger dispatch. Yes, they still have a post office that still is in operation in the downtown area, but they have a building that's just kind of adjacent, that's kind of uh, being used for office space. So the city and county are looking to move forward on acquiring this building, and this would not cost them anything because it's a federally uh, owned building, and then the city and county would acquire it, and they uh, any kind of updates or any kind of uh, wiring and stuff like that would be on them, and this would basically house municipal courts. Um, most of, it's basically they're going to try to move city hall, and also incorporate the county as well as they move forward, move over there, and that's uh, particularly where they might have city council. They they might they with the space that they have, they might be able to do some city council meetings there as well moving forward. All right, so there's just a lot going on here as well. Let's talk about the Missoula Public Library um, in terms of the open dates. So. Like I said before, this is still moving forward. I haven't heard anything in the last minute cancelizations from the Missoula Public Library, but the new public library will be opening starting um, May 3rd, which is a Monday, the first of, of their week. And Monday through Saturday will be their open hours and it's from 9 a.m. to noon. And those are gonna be the opening hours for the first couple weeks, I believe. That may change. I'll know, uh, I'll let you know as soon as I know, but so far, they're going to have devoted days to seniors, which consists of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then the general public will be able to go there Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Usually Tuesdays and Thursdays is when they do a lot of their tiny tales and story time at the Missoula Public Library with kids. But so far, they said that they don't want to do any kind of group activities. But they do want to provide an open space for people to go to. And they ask that people do not linger for any longer than an hour. They stay there for an hour or less. It's mostly for a a looky-loo of the new library, but most of all, just to be able to go inside, get your uh, medium, um, and check it out, basically. Because, you know, they check out DVDs, uh, mangas, books, of course, uh, and they also have an interior system where you can check out laptops within there. There is no official de facto computer lab. There's They are computers sprawled out through the building, but there's also a laptop vending machine, which people will enjoy using. All right, so this weekend, we will see another performance for the Zootown Arts Community Center. Uh, they're part of their social distancing sessions they've been doing every single Saturday. Right now, here is last weekend's performing performer, Aaron, Wailing Aaron, Wailing Aaron Jennings and company. Coming up after that is pre-critic, so stay with me. So I feel like it's like this next song is appropriate. Uh, it was written by the great Hank Snow, who as everyone knows is Canadian. And, uh, but this song is about being from Texas. So I identify as a Montanan who was born in Texas, so I sing this song. So, 
by a Canadian to connect with my roots. Boys, I was born in the Texas state many years ago. Oh, I rode on every range and plane. There's no place I don't know. I love to swing my lariat. That's all I'll ever do. I'm a rootin' singing cowboy and I've never had to lose. Or hop on my old Pinto and or the plane we ride. Just swinging in the saddle, my guitar hangs by my side. Old Pinto's always willing to dance for me. I'm never sad. You'll find there beats an honest heart in this old Texas land. We are back, and now we're here to talk about some movies and the media that's coming out this weekend as well. And uh, before I get started, I do want to give a little props and a little shout out to uh, Hemingway, uh, Ken Burns. Um, you gotta love Ken Burns and his documentary style where you have a picture and it slowly moves as the picture moves. It's great. It's wonderful. You get all of that in Ken Burns magic and more in the Hemingway documentary that's part of a major part series, and each part seems to be about two hours long. Uh, straight, no commercials, and it's all about uh, Ernest Hemingway, um, America's uh, one of America's greatest writers uh, of the, uh, I guess, the postmodern era, I want to believe. Um, but yeah, I suggest you guys watch that. But let's talk about a couple movies that are coming out this weekend that you can totally skip because they're all just whatever. Mophie, welcome to the 80s once again, and we welcome a man's man. A man so manly, he likes the company of men. If you don't know what I mean, don't ask, don't tell, because this story is about a soldier in South Africa grappling with his secret while trying to serve his South African nation, with basically imperialistic uh, uh, England that has uh, overarching rule over South Africa, which primarily is controlled by white people, even though it's uh, highly populated by black people. But anyways, uh, let's not talk about any of that. Let's talk about this white uh, soldier's struggle with his sexuality in South Africa, and it's in the 80s, and there's a war, something going on there as well. And yeah, so that's kind of what's uh, what happens. I'm assuming that they find out, but then it turns out maybe that he's, uh, it's like he's, it doesn't matter um, who he is, as long as he's serving his nation. I guess that's the moral of the story. 
Moving on. Wow, let's not get too political. Let's move on to Voyagers. Yes, it is a sci-fi movie, so you might want to roll your eyes now. In space, no one can hear. No one in space. Nobody can entertain you enough for this kind of madness to come with cabin fever. This sci-fi movie explores relationships, as you can see by the naked people in this poster. But this one is one of those movies that asks, huh, what if you're stuck in a ship until you die? Then you have to raise a family to supplement the work that you've been doing so far. It's a multi-generational ship, so the whole point is that you're, uh, you're, as soon as you board the ship and launch from Earth on your way to a new life on a new planet, you it's going to take a long time. No matter what, even if you're going speed of light, the whole idea is that that's 20 light years away, 20 years. But there, I don't think there's any uh, galaxy that's close. But let's not get into realism because this is a Hollywood movie, and I guess there's a romance in it. And anyways, um, it's a very real questions about how humans will colonize space, but it will ignore that question and get into the Hollywood answer that is always bad, and science can never account on human error, but science kind of already does. But most people don't like science and must come up with a drama, psychological, sci-fi thr thriller to sell tickets. That's basically what we're going to get from this movie. There, ah, ah, there's not much you can tell in terms of a story. Um, yeah, anyways, up next we got a video game. And in the vein of uh, sci-fi, once again, we have those games, Outriders. Something about space and shooting aliens and collecting loot for you to... Uh, Feel your desire to uh, colonize space and basically uh, destroy and take everything for yourself. That sounds very familiar, like history of man in general. But anyways, this is an RPG game. You play with, uh, you co-op with other people to basically uh, Christopher Columbus space and that's it. I'm assuming there's a larger story and some kind of alien um, artifacts and you'd be like, cool, look at that. It's like, oh, did you know that these aliens existed 3,000 years ago? That's what the carbon dating says. And then you're just going to ignore that and you just kill another monster. It's it's just what it is. It's just kind of like one of those games where it's like large maps and you're just kind of wandering around collecting stuff, Minecrafting, basically. All right, so those are the things that are coming out this weekend. Up next, we have a dubbing stuff for you guys. And it is a comedy movie from back in the day. It's called The over the Top Gang rides again from 1970. And then when I come back, we're going to talk about some city council, and it gets heated. Man, in all my years, I've never seen quite a beauty such as yourself. <laughs> I tell you what. Oh, look, it's my friends. I'll be right back. Get over here, your old so-and-sos. I'm buying drinks for y'all. So that young lady I was talking to, she's on OnlyFans. Oh, after you it out. Let me guess, she's trying to pay off her debt, ain't she? Why can't they get them scholarships? Well, that's a very- What would you say her handle is? Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. I assume that she wants to become a nurse or something. Mm hmm? Uh, uh, I guess, well, that sounds about right. Well, I would say she's a hard-working lady. She's working really hard. Uh, she's an entrepreneur, uh, of course. She does uh, trading and all sorts of things. Hmm, I may have to invest after all. She has an account at the bank where you can get a line of credit. I just don't like the lengths that some women have to go through. Well, it's all on her. She sets the price and she, you know. Well, what if we say uh, one of her clients uh, doesn't pay her and what happens after that? I would cut off his penis. I would very much like to break into this market. Well, uh, um, it's not... Are you saying he's not pretty enough to do it? Or are you just saying that you didn't think of it yourself? Well, I think we're comparing apples to oranges here, and I don't think you understand that I have a respectable job in this town, and I do not want to do any kind of uh, internet thing what she's doing. I have a couple questions for her. I'll be right back. Well, let's all go check it out. Maybe uh, you guys also have some questions about how the pay works. It's uh, paywalls, honey. You go online and you see him in an image, but if you want to see more of it, you pay a fee to enter. So, how long have you been doing this, ma'am? Oh, about a week, but it feels like a lifetime. Just ask little Simpy. Oh, well, it's nice to pretend that we go way back, but it feels like we've been doing this for quite some time now. Sounds like true love. Well, better get back to work. I got more paywalls to pay through. Uh, I have a question. It's at Proud Kitten. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> Only 80 G's to go. A 
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about uh, City Council. But before that, I did want to mention that there, uh, during the public comment, there was a heated uh, discussion. Uh, uh, not even discussion. It was a uh, there's a heated comment that was being done, and the city uh, a city council member uh, voiced her concern. Stacy Andrews spoke out against the law that claims that uh, public comment Matt Larson's has been making it against the city, and this is what Matt Larson's had to say about the spending in the city. Uh, there is uh, 500 bullets. Count them. Five boxes of 100 bullets each for the 223 round being purchased by MPD for $1,700. That's $4 a bullet almost. And the, the only reason this is relevant is because there's been policy complaints that are being delayed by MPD about their ammo policy and their ammunition being unaccounted for. So you're literally just feeding like this, this fifth and I, I don't know what you're like throwing all this money at during a, a ammo shortage. And <laughs> please don't let me hear you make any comments uh, uh, to, to uh, um, the effect of, of denouncing gun violence while you continue to fuel a, a source of ammunition that could be being sold on the black market as we speak. And it's being delayed by you guys and you guys are buying them more militarized stuff. You're buying them batons now to beat people in crowds? Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, and <clears throat> $1,700 for 500 bullets is the type of thing that we do not need to be spending money on, in my opinion. And especially if you can't even account for all the bullets that you're buying on a monthly basis and, and, and aren't even going through the steps to adequately field a complaint, a policy complaint regarding this. It's absolutely egregious. You're just literally throwing money away. And it's so disappointing. It is very disappointing as a community member, as just a person with a head on their shoulders. Ms. Anderson, and so, quite a personal privilege. I would like to stop the lying and false accusations by this person. Um, they're literally making things up and putting it on public record. Uh, who's talking? Who's talking right now? Thank who's you. talking right now? Mr. Larson, let's wrap it up. You've got about 10 more seconds. I was just interrupted. I, I don't know. This is just, right, this is totally please. an example of the complete, complete and utter lying that's going on by you guys. And it's right. ridiculous to watch. So uh, have Thank fun. You, have Larson. fun approving this rubber stamping this BS. So basically, uh, Matt Larson wants a kind of a, uh, he, he wants to know exactly what, how much money the city uses where it goes every detail um he asks the questions like oh how much did this cost i was like why is this amount of money going to this i i found out that you're spending uh 40 more dollars for this thing than you would for the other thing and um you know there's just uh it's a very interesting kind of uh compl complex uh, system in place and uh the best way i've ever been told in terms of how the city budget works is all about uh the potential money and yes that doesn't help a lot of people because you know the taxes haven't come in and come through and not to mention you have to deal with the fact that there's money that happens through grants proposals and stuff like that so so much so the budget just so you guys know they are starting the budget committee meetings and they started that a couple weeks ago and one of the things that you should definitely look into if you are interested in the budget is the budget committee meetings and uh, follow that and basically they start um march late march and they discuss this and they talk about the budget from last year and can kind of have a scope of what the budget is going to look like uh for the next fiscal year and in August, um, if everything goes according to plan, uh, by August, they will have a final proposal for the 2022 fiscal year. So, so far, they already have the fiscal year for this year already set in place. Yes, they have to uh, look into the budget and reallocate funds when there's any kind of new th development and um, discretionary funds and stuff like that to move forward a lot of the properties and stuff like that. But... There's always going to be bills to pay, and so far, uh, this is just something that you can look into as well. And it's very kind of it's it's interesting where he's coming from, 
but he's not going to get the kind of answers that he wants because it is a very uh, complex system that is in place when you're trying to finance a whole city, pay the bills, and also do some investments within the city of Missoula as well. And I'm, I'm not the perfect person to talk to about this as well. I just want this to move forward. But anyways, I'm done. Let's talk about something a little less intense. Uh, here is uh, Acting Council President Gwen Jones with uh, a proclamation. Um, Missoula County and the City of Missoula, whereas Sexual Assault Awareness Month, S-A-A-M, also called SAM, calls attention to the fact that sexual violence is widespread and has public health and safety implications for the city and county of Missoula and beyond. And whereas rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment harm our community, our friends, and our families. Studies show one in five women and one in 67 men will be raped at some point in their lives. One in six boys and one in four girls will experience sexual assault before age 18. And on campus, one in five women and one in 16 men are sexually assaulted during their time in college. And whereas statistics can tell us how many people are harmed, but talking to a survivor reveals the true impact of this violence, loss of safety and trust, and sometimes even the loss of hope. And whereas the goal of SAAM is more than awareness, the ultimate goal is prevention of sexual harassment, abuse, and ass assault. Prevention meaning stopping sexual violence before it happens by changing norms that allow it to exist in the first place, from attitudes, values, and behaviors to laws, institutions, and social norms. And whereas we ask our community to join us in the Strong Alone, Fearless Together campaign and champion the power of asking and receiving consent. Prevention is everyone's job. All of us can help create safe environments. We can intervene to stop behavior, promote healthy attitudes and relationships, believe survivors and connect them, to, connect them to resources. And whereas we strongly support the efforts of national, state and local sexual assault prevention and response programs in their efforts to create safe and healthy communities. Now, therefore, we, John Engen, Mayor of the City of Missoula and Josh Slotnick, Juanita Vero and Dave Strohmeyer, Missoula County Commissioners, do hereby join the Student Advocacy Resource Center of the University of Montana, the YWCA Missoula, Project Beacon of All Nations Health Center, First Step at Providence St. Patrick Hospital, the Make Your Move Project of the Missoula County Community Justice Department and communities across the country in playing an active role to prevent sexual violence. Along with the United States government and the state of Montana, we do hereby proclaim April 2021 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in the city of Missoula and Missoula County. So far, domestic violence is on a high and in the U.S. and much higher in Missoula, according to Missoula's crime victim advocates, there are many services that mentioned that she mentioned if you are someone who knows uh, someone or who have been involved with a sexual assault. Um, sorry, I lied about the whole less intense topic, but it is important to mention that this is something that has been kind of on the rise. Domestic disturbances. A lot of people are cooped up inside in their homes because of COVID. But yeah, that's a proclamation. So this month is sexual awareness, uh, sexual assault awareness month. Um, the city, uh, moving on, the city to talk about rezoning in areas of Missoula, just west of Mountain Line, um, Mountain Line Bus, their home base, not their depot downtown, but they have a home base, which is just off of Burton Street. It's right next to, uh, basically as Scott Street goes up, there's a whole bus depot in area, but there's a block, a square blockage area in which they want to convert. And rezoning is mostly for basically allowing developers to develop larger, more complex buildings or uh, smaller sections to uh, have a smaller area put in place. But this is a more of a mixed industrial use zone, but they wanted to uh, convert it into a larger dwelling unit possibility. So right now with the rezoning, it would uh, allow for about 32 dwelling units per acre with this new rezoning. And this item will be open until Monday. A lot of these are public hearings. And up next, there are some things uh, that they're talking about. Amplified sounds in the city parks. And you would think that this is something that, you know, that needs to be kind of, you know, dealt with. And just, you know, this is just a loophole thing that the Parks and Rec in the city of Missoula is looking into. But actually got a little more in depth than I actually um, expected it to. So here's Shirley uh, Kinsey with Parks and Recs talks about issues associated with loud gatherings. The amplification permit itself helps regulate when, 
where, how long, and how loud amplified sound can happen in the parks. It mostly applies for large public events that happen in community parks, um, such as band concerts or musical performances. Um, sometimes tournaments um, do a lot of announcing. So really those in community parks at those larger events. For the neighborhood parks, we don't issue amplification permits. In these smaller parks, there's generally no, um, there's generally no buffer between the parks and the residential housing. And so in, in the neighborhood parks, um, noise in, in general is complaint driven. So far, there's no rule to how loud you can be at a park, but there are neighborhood parks that are, are more inclusive and a lot of complaints are usually complaint driven. So if there are noise complaints, usually it's a person who complains and asks the police to uh, squash any amplifications that may occur. The city doesn't have, does have an or noise ordinance that tops about uh, 50 to about 60 decibels in a residential uh, use depending upon the day. Usually it's about uh, uh, industrial, have an allowance of 70 to 80 decibels. And just so you guys know, if you, um, if you wanna know exactly what, you know, it goes by 10 decibels. So every 10 decibels is the double of sound. So when you start with 10 or 20 decibels, it's usually a quiet whisper, leaves rustling, wind, and quiet chatter. Well, you know, like if you have something that's like 50 to 60 decibels, which is more of what people would prefer um, in terms would be conversations in restaurants, office, background music, air conditioning unit um, at about 100 feet. And that's what uh, uh, 50 to about 60 uh, decibels would sound like. And that is kind of like the peak in terms of noise. So Julie Merritt, a city council member, talks about the larger parks that, allow, that allows amplified sound. Amplified sound is prohibited in Missoula parks with the exception of the listed community parks, Bonner Park, Banshell, Fort Missoula Regional Park, Playfair Park, McCormick Park, Silver Park, Karis, Bess Reed, BN Plaza, and Rose Memorial Park, and any other park designated by the Parks and Rec Director or his or her designee. An amplified sound permit is required in the listed parks and may be obtained for the use of public address PA systems or stereo systems. And I used to live across from Silver Park, across the river, and not, like across is a is kind of uh, it's shortening it, but it, I was quite a distance away. And usually, when the game would be over for the uh, Ospreys, now the Paddleheads, they would uh, launch fireworks, and you would hear it in the distance. And so they got permits for that because it is a larger park and a more uh, allowance. And also, uh, it was permitted by the city of Missoula. You could get permits, and they wanted to apply that to more smaller parks and stuff like that. The fee is about 45 bucks a day for this, if if this were to pass moving forward. Any information on hosting events that's gatherings in parks should be run by Parks and Rec, not necessarily the city of Missoula for permitting, for permit, uh, uh, for permitting, permit, permitting, man. Sorry, I'm just like, when you, it's it's better said than read. That's, that's like kind of like, anyways. The whole idea behind this is that uh, they want to kind of like close the loophole. Um, so if you are interested and actually have any questions, you can actually call the Parks and Rec Department 542-PARK, otherwise known as 542-9283. And so that number is, so far, this would create clarity, but has also created some more questions within the community. Um, this is Thomas um, with Public Comment, and he spoke on this. Uh, I understand the intent. I think the tool is already there. And there's no reason to obfuse what problem are we trying to solve? On one hand, there are no complaints. And on the other hand, there are complaints that are really, really bad. Well, I think that the Missoula, I love our cops. I think they can do it. I don't think they need another reason to do this. And giving somebody a permit just enables them to be more offensive. Hey, I've got a permit. I can do whatever I want. It's my free speech. I really think this is best left the way it is with being good Missoulians to each other, we have wonderful police force. They already have the tool. 
There's no extra tool that's needed. And there's no way Parks and Rec is going to enforce this themselves. And so here is another public comment, and this is Teague, who is a musician, and he also comments on this as well. I understand the intent. Um, everybody always has amazing intentions, you know, when they when they do something like this. But when the wording is um, can be instead of shall be, uh, you know, concerns me uh, anytime something you know, can be abused, it usually is abused on some level to certain people, depending on, you know, it just, it just, it happens every time, basically, you know, um, I know that there's going to be um, people who, like John, will try to play in the park, um, and they'll have to pay $48, and um, if they don't, then a cop's going to come down and write them a ticket, you know, that's going to happen. And uh, so for me, that hurts Missoula and the soul of Missoula, which is uh, art and vibes and music and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I, I, I disagree with this ordinance. I don't think that it's a good thing for Missoula. I understand, um, you know, some of the, the other side of what you guys are saying, but I just think that um, it is restrictive and it will be abused on some level to certain people. That's just the way, I mean, people are, are enforcing it. And so people abuse, you know, even good people with the best intentions, you know, and the people that have to uh, enforce this stuff are still just humans. And so, you know, it's gonna, uh, um, it's gonna hurt Missoula. So final consideration on this will happen next Monday's meeting and a lot of the public hearings and so far what they've been doing is they've been extending it because in COVID times, public hearings are usually get talked about um, um, a lot longer because of the pandemic. So it gives a lot of people a chance to uh, write letters, call their city council, their ward representatives and be like, yeah, I don't like this because of this. So you, you are more than welcome to do that. I did not follow any of the community meetings, but that was a nice overview of what's happening with your city council this week. We'll talk more about it next Friday. But like I said earlier in my show, I will not show Cindy Farr because uh, by the time I show it to you, she will be posted another video, which will make the video I show you out of date. So for right now, here is a promo. Actually, actually never mind. I should actually just skip over the promo and actually tell you guys a little bit more about the uh, city of Missoula and which you can find out more information by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. In this website, you are able to uh, find the links uh, to your city council meetings and be able to actually find um, um, receipts on exactly what the Missoula has spent money on, invoices and money that they're going to spit, claims, and there's, uh, there's definitely a lot of um, information and definitely a little more clarity for those of you who are looking to count the numbers in terms of what the money, what the city spends money on. But there's always some uh, more questions that get raised because it always feels as though, like, coming back to me, um, what I always notice about the city is that they do a lot of things and then people question it and then the city answers and then the people have even more questions about it. That's always something that I've always kind of noticed about it is that the city tries to be a little more forthcoming when it, and transparent when it comes to their, uh, their plans and ideals. Many people have a thing against uh, TIF funding, um, tax increment financing, and it is a way, like, by the main definition within the state of Montana is to mitigate blight in, the, uh, in, a, in, a, in a town or whatever and to add a tax credit for developers as well. So the city in their own right uh, was able to kind of uh, evolve this into something in which they could leverage affordable housing, but also um, mitigate blight in the long run with that. So that's kind of how the Missoula has been doing it with increasing units per housing and trying to mitigate some of that stuff as well. So I don't know what to tell you. Um, you can be for a lot of things. You can be a lot against a lot of things, but you know, if you want to learn more and educate yourself, you can go to ci.mt.us. But if you want to learn more about MCAT and all our wackiness, uh, we're going to be uh, eventually start up um, handing out equipment 
and video cameras and stuff like that to the public. Um, we'll be checking that out starting on May 3rd. We'll, and with the limited hours, we'll probably have an extended um, time in terms of checkouts. I'll still have the discuss with my boss, but I, I'm pretty sure that we're going to try to do a week to two week uh, checkout period for a lot of our cameras just so there's more of a buffer so people don't have to pay the automated fee that's that happens when you don't turn in your uh, equipment in back on time because yes the library does have books that you can check out and there are late fees associated with that but in terms of uh, higher grade more expensive equipment it's going to be a little more expensive if you're late so we'll talk a little bit more about that as we move forward but if you're interested in learning more about MCAT as always you can go to MCAT.org if you're interested in learning more about me good luck because I won't say anything but <laughs> if you are if you have to know, uh, you can find me on my YouTube page, um, Wake Up Missoula, or you can find me on the Facebook page, Wake Up Missoula, and I'm slowly but surely eventually going to abandon Facebook altogether. Personal choice, social media, garbage, peace. But anyways, <laughs> that's enough for me, and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.